Hi guys, welcome back. This week I'm going to be moving away from the modern period that I've been covering quite a lot recently and kind of going back and starting on another earlier period and I'm going to be continuing to do that for the next several weeks at least because I know there are people out there, believe it or not, who are not interested in modern figures and want to see some of the other eras involved in wargaming so I want to give them something and I'll just be, you know, kind of doing this for a while, you know, see how it works and we'll kind of just play by ear with that, but definitely moving away from the modern for a while. And this week I'm going to be covering a subject that is historical, but it kind of blurs the lines a little bit with fantasy and folklore, and that is this guy. This is a pirate figure from Brigade Games. I think it's sculpted by Paul Hicks, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Nonetheless, it is a very good job, and they have a very nice range of pirate figures. He's very sort of conventionally piratey, you know, he's got an eye patch and sort of traditional pirate looking clothes. And I know pirates are a very popular sort of genre in war game, at least they have been in the past. They're great for skirmish gaming, you don't need very many of them. You've got things like the old Warhammer uh, pirate rule set, which is now out of print I think, but that was very popular. And I think Osprey is getting ready to release a new rule set too on the Seven Seas. I think that's from Osprey. That's going to come out really soon. So, you've got, you know, there's, a lot, there's still a lot of interest in this, and I think people enjoy Pirates. They like sort of that pulpy kind of feel. It's not very serious. It's fun to go looking for treasure and fight with colonial authorities. And, you know, it's just not an era that, you know, you don't take it very seriously. It's just kind of fun. And, that, and that's going to be fun for painting this guy, because we don't really have to worry about any really specific sort of historical color schemes or anything. You can really have fun, let loose, you know, use some garish colors, you know, just kind of, it's, it's a great figure for just, you know, trying things out, playing with color and pattern. So we're going to be doing that a little bit. The other thing you may have noticed is that I haven't painted the flesh on this figure, and that's because I do want to show you again how I paint skin because I get often I get requests for that, and I have done it in the past. Uh, you can see my Greek hoplite video, for example, if you're interested. But it seems to be something that's worth reiterating because I know it's something that a lot of people struggle with. It's important, so I am going to be doing it here again, just kind of as a refresher. He doesn't have that many areas of exposed flesh on him, but nonetheless, I'm going to be showing you how I do it. And further, I'm going to set one other kind of, I guess, challenge, if you want to call it, for this video. It's not really a challenge, but, of course, as you know, I often work with foundry triads, which are quite nice, in my opinion. You know that I really love them, but at the same time, I know very many people don't have them. They can't get them where they live, or they just don't want to because they are quite expensive, as paints go. And I understand that, and I've definitely had people, you know, remark on that, or, you know, it's been a criticism, well, this is, you know, frustrating for me, because I, these foundry paints are just not readily available, can't you, you know, use something that more people have, and that's what I'm going to be doing this time. So this whole video, I'm going to be using only Vallejo paints for this particular figure, because I know Vallejo is a, that's, that's a paint range that most people have access to. It's not too expensive, and they have a lot of colors. And, I mean, I've complained. I have my complaints when it comes to Vallejo, but they still have a lot of things going for them, and you can most certainly do a very good job and get very good results on a figure using Vallejo paints only. So I'm going to be showing you, you know, how I would do this with only Vallejo paints, and also maybe especially helpful would be, you know, how I do, would do a skin tone using only Vallejo paints. There was actually, back in the old days, before I had Foundry, I actually did paint all the flesh with Vallejo, so, you know, I'm going to be showing you basically how you can go about that, and hopefully you know, that will be helpful for you if you can't or don't want to pick up the Foundry paint sets, which, you know, as we said, expensive, hard to get, all of that. Uh, as for those of you who maybe work with Citadel, I'm not going to be doing that, except for the washes, because it's not because I don't like Citadel, I think it's pretty nice stuff, and I think I could probably do good paint tutorials with it, but honestly, I just don't have very much of it. I have a little bit of their range, but I don't have enough to build a painting tutorial around, so sorry about that, guys who are Citadel fans. I know that's also a pretty easy paint to get in most places, and it's really common in wargaming circles, but... I just can't do it. I don't have the materials to make that work for you. But I'm going to show you with Vallejo, which I think is almost as easy to come by. So that's, I guess, all I need to say about that. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start out here by painting the pirate skin. Now, I said this was going to be a Vallejo tutorial, and it is. 
and I do have enough Vallejo paints to do the tutorial, but nonetheless, there are an awful lot of Vallejo colors out there, and I'm pretty sure everybody doesn't have all of them. Okay, well, there are probably a few fanatics who do, but the majority of us are not gonna have every Vallejo color out there, so I am choosing colors from my skin tone here that you know work with my collection. You're probably gonna have to do the same thing too. So the color we're gonna get, the skin tone we're gonna get here is gonna be kind of on the browny yellow side of things. It's not gonna be as peachy or as pink maybe, but I think that is well in keeping with a pirate who you'd expect to be outside in the sun getting pretty tan and sort of sunbaked and all that. So my base color here is going to be German Camouflage Pale Brown and I'm just going to apply it generously all over the uh, flesh areas. And uh, next I'm going to apply a wash, this Agrex Earth Shade from Citadel, which is what I always use, and I'm just putting it everywhere. I'm now going to apply my first highlight color, and for that I am using Brown Sand from Vallejo. As you can see, I thinned it down a bit, not too much. Vallejo paints tend to be a lot thinner out of the bottle than say the foundry paints that I usually work with, so you don't usually have to do quite so much thinning to get a good consistency, but you know, depending on the paint, you may well. So yeah, I'm just gonna put it everywhere pretty much carefully, except really down in the deep recesses. And I'm going to, especially in areas like the cheeks, um, I'm going to be blending it out, putting the most color on the apples and tops of the cheeks and then sort of feathering it outwards or making it more transparent towards the backs to give, the, you know, a little bit of illusion that, you know, he has, there's more, con a bit of contouring going on there, as they would say in makeup terms. Um, and you really want to focus, when you're painting flesh, you really want to focus, pay the most attention to the face because it's the thing on the miniature that almost everybody is going to look at the most. So even if you get a little sloppy with the hands or other body parts, make sure that, you know, you really spend the extra effort to get good results here and, you know, be neat and don't make a mess. The next thing I'm going to be doing is reinforcing all of the really deep shadow areas on the figure, and I'm gonna be doing this using black red. And I actually use this color even on other figures, like you know when I'm using the Foundry Trident, I still use this as a great color for um, you know getting down in the real deep recesses where on the borders of the skin areas between the fingers. I usually am going to, I apply this under the nose, sort of under the lower lip, and also just between the lips uh, in the sort of the eye sockets and inside the ears if they're sculpted, and just as an edging color to delineate the flesh from the rest of the figure. You might think red is a kind of a weird color choice here, but this is such a very deep dark red color, um, it tends to not scan that way, especially with the uh, transparency of acrylic paints. It's, it's not going to feel really oppressively red. It usually blends nicely with the brown or sort of flesh shades that you use and gives a really nice sort of contrast. So that's what I'm going to be applying first. And this is great for cleaning up any messes you made when you were highlighting, say, the tops of the fingers in the last step. Now you can really sort of fix the areas where you got lighter shades and you didn't really want them before. I'm now going to add a second highlight color and I am using um, dark sand for this. I have, have mixed a little bit of that brown sand into it as well to make it be not quite so light, not quite so yellow. And I'm going to apply it now uh, most areas of the figure and kind of be blending it out of course. So you can see especially places like the tops of his fingers all are going to get this color, um, sort of the top well, his top, his knuckles, those sorts of areas, and on his face, you know, you want to think about areas where light would be hitting on a face. So his nose, his chin, the apples of his cheeks, around his jawbone, um, the area underneath his nose, definitely his lower lip, all of those areas. You probably want to stay away from his eye and eye region. That area needs to stay fairly dark, or at least that's how I paint my figures. But, you know, you can see I'm just applying it. If you, if you thin the paint down a fair amount first, you can apply a layer pretty transparently and then look at it. And then, you know, you can then go back and put a second layer on 
on those areas like the tops of the cheekbones and stuff where you really want there to be a lot of light and emphasis. So, you know, I think the trick for getting a good uh, skin effect, no matter what kind of paint you're using, is always going to be to work with thin layers of paint and build it up. And because you're working on a very small, small area here, it's not so onerous as if you have to apply many, many, many layers on something larger like a coat or a pair of pants. I mean, ideally you do that everywhere, but I mean, for the sake of practicality, you know, you have to make some allowances usually if you want to get your figure done in a reasonable amount of time. I'm then going to finish my highlighting off by using some buff from Vallejo. Now, as you know, in most of my tutorials, if you've seen them, when I'm painting skin, my highest highlight is usually Boneyard Light, so that's why I'm using buff. It's, it's a similar color, a little bit more yellow, a little darker, but it, it works in a pinch. And you want to be very, very sparing with this highlight. I only usually put just the smallest amount on places like the knuckles, the very tips of his fingers. Um, those sorts of things and on his face especially be very careful you don't want to overdo it here so you know place this thing just a bit on say the tip of his nose just a tiny bit on his chin definitely on his lip and then maybe just the slightest indication on the very tops of his cheekbones but this color this highest highlight when you're putting on skin is really important it really you want you don't want to skip it because that highlight really makes a face look good you need that emphasis that dimension but it needs to be used very sparingly to really be effective And now to move on to the pants. I've already kind of, I don't know, I thought about it a little bit, what I wanted to do with colors on this pirate. In the end, I decided I was gonna go for kind of a really traditional classic pirate look, kind of Long John Silver type thing. So I'm gonna be giving him sort of blackish gray pants. My base coat here is going to be a mixture of black, uh, German gray and a little bit of Oxford blue in there just to get a little bit more of a tint to that color Make it a little bit more interesting German gray by the way already has a slight bluish cast to it So it's a, always a nice color if you want to get a little more interest in your blacks and grays But I want to you know, I really want to reinforce that further So I'm going to first go ahead and apply that as a base coat My first highlight is then going to be a mix of the German gray and a bit more of the Oxford blue. Remember, you don't want this to really be blue blue, you want it to be more gray or black, but you still want to keep consistently putting that blue in every step of the way to make sure that you know you keep that cast in there. And that's going to be the first highlight. So you can see I'm going to apply that pretty generously and blend it out. And you're not going to see a huge difference between that and the color that I had as my base, but it's there and it's subtle. And especially when you're painting things that are black or very dark gray, usually subtlety is really, really important. So, you know, you go for those steps even if you don't think you notice immediately. Um, and then from there on, I'm really just gonna start um, highlighting by adding small amounts of, of lightning color into the, that color that I just made with the German gray and Oxford blue. The color I'm using to lighten this up is um, silver gray from Vallejo, and it's a very light, light gray color. You could use white too. It doesn't matter a whole bunch here, but you know, just add in very small quantities of it though, because you don't want, you know, you don't want to get too light too quickly, or this blending process is going to get a lot harder. So here I am just kind of applying a second coat with a bit of that silver gray in there, a lighter color. And you can see I'm emphasizing the creases, uh, the tops of the knees, the areas that I usually do. I'm just doing it a little bit more, um, in a, a, a bit more subtle fashion. I'm being a little bit more reserved with my application of paint. And then I'll, and I'll then finish with one final highlight color where I mix in even more of the silver gray and really use that. You can see I'm putting it to fine line sort of the um, seams and the side of his pants and really around the bottom where I expect there to be wear and then fine creases. And the end result, as you can see, kind of what's developing here is still quite subtle, but you can definitely see that there are distinct highlights showing up on these dark trousers. Now obviously if we're going to be doing a classic pirate, the jacket really has to be red. It's just like the illustrations in the classic edition of Treasure Island or okay if you're a little less into the literary scene maybe 
um, <laughs> the sort of the Captain Morgan type guy from the bottle of rum, you know, that kind of thing. So we're going for the nice, rich, dark red, which is also going to be really complementary to those gray black trousers we painted. And the base coat I'm going to be using here is going to be black red again, which is a great base color for red. And this is especially important because of what we're going to have to do to get a brighter red because Vallejo does not have very strong reds. They're very transparent paints. So in order to compensate for that, you need to make sure you have a really strong, good base color. So you may need to put a couple of layers on to really make it strong. And we're going to really be using the, the highlighting red colors more as a filter to brighten this up than actually applying them sort of to stand alone. So yeah, it's one of the big drawbacks of Vallejo paints. Their bright colors particularly are frustratingly lacking in pigmentation. I should say all of their colors. They have a lot that are quite good, but all their really bright colors like reds, oranges, yellows, really, really don't have very good pigmentation. There's a, they look nice in the bottle, they look bright, but when they go on, they're really thin and watery, and there's a lot of sort of medium in there and not a lot of heavy color. So that's annoying and that's why we needed to get that dark base in there so in order to start highlighting i'm now taking that black red and i've kind of mixed it 50 50 with some carmine red and that's going to be my first highlight color and that's one way you, one technique you can use to compensate for badly pigmented paints bright paints is you can um, mix them in with another paint that does have better pigmentation the black red is a dark enough color that it has good pigmentation so you know by cutting that bright red in there you are getting a color that is better but nonetheless you can see it's still pretty thin and I have not thinned this paint at all it's just like this out of the bottle so you, you shouldn't even be trying to thin these colors because they're always thin enough on their own so what I'm doing here and I'm just gonna go back multiple times I'm gonna be applying this paint over and over again in layers and building it up it's kind of working like a filter and that and it's, I'm kind of using that transparency to my advantage you can get really nice effects this way it just takes a long time because you've got sort of these brighter colors being built up very gradually over these darker colors which gets be a beautiful range of color very rich very subtle especially with red but you really have to put the time in and it's, it's not practical most of the time but so I'm just gonna go over it apply that first layer and then I'm gonna go back in with just pure carmine red and that's even worse because that's really thin. You can even see how sort of patchy it is when I put it on. So you really have to be applying multiple layers to get a enough strength of color. And you can see, but because it goes on so slowly and subtly, it's, you, you can look at it as a blessing too because it lets you, as I said, really build up nice gradual shading on the figure. So I'm just keep, it's gonna, I'm gonna be going over him probably five or six times at least with this Carmen Red in order to build up the brightness enough. And you can see I'm not trying to even put it everywhere, but all the areas where you want light to hit, I'm just gonna keep going over it and over and over it and brightening it and brightening it and brightening it until I really kind of get where I want to go with it and it is going to take a while and you want to make sure your layers are thin don't try to put this this transparent paint on too thick it's tempting because you think well then I can finally get some real color out of it but that tends to lead to unevenness you'll get an uneven layer it'll look blotchy because the pigment doesn't sort of distribute very well throughout the medium so you do need to make sure you put it on smoothly and thinly as frustrating as that is that you have to go over it so many times you don't don't try to really blob it on because that won't work for you either so this is a frustrating process it's one of the drawbacks of using Vallejo and bright colors so this is the best way I found to work around this problem it's slow going but you know there's not really much else that you can do and I think this betrays a little bit Vallejo's origins more as sort of model painting for making um, vehicles or one-off large-scale figures. You're painting one figure and you want to do it to a really high standard. These sorts of things are not such a big deal, you know. It's, it's, it's annoying, but it, it, in some ways it's actually even better having this fine control when you're working like that. But, you know, when, of course, when Wargaming is a whole nother you know ball of wax because you want to get a lot of stuff done relatively quickly so then this is not such a great paint for that I'm gonna be adding a final highlight color of um, um, 
orange red or red orange, I'm not sure which. And this color is even worse in terms of pigmentation than the Carmen Red was. It's really bad. And it also, the medium, maybe my paint's a little old, it tends to dry a little glossy, which is even more obnoxious. But what I'm doing here, it is very orange as you can see, but I'm using it really as mo more a filter than anything. Um, there's those paints from Citadel, if you're familiar with them, that sort of have that purpose. But you can see it, when it's applied over that red, it really brightens it up. It adds this extra really bright kind of feeling to the outfit, especially around the edges. So we're not really making anything orange by doing this because the paints are just too darn thin and transparent for that to happen. So. I'm going to be going over some of the really high highlight areas several times with this color and blending it out just for that extra layer. And once I'm done with that, I'm sorry to say I had to go over the whole coat again with some matte varnish because the medium in this orange was poorly mixed and it dried, like I said, not matte and it looked like crap. So I had to go back and correct that then before I continued with the rest of the figure. So following on with our classic pirate theme, I'm gonna be painting his cuffs and sort of the flaps on the front of his coat, his collar, in a nice dark blue color. And the base I'm using here is a mixture of black and Prussian blue, and you, you can see I'm making it quite dark. And you've probably seen that's kind of a theme here when working with Vallejo paints. Uh, you wanna put on a really extra dark base coat, always for with, in, with most things, and then really, really, um, you know, apply subsequent layers um, more thinly or and or have that dark color there to compensate when, um, when you know, the paints that are brighter are not very pigmented. So that's why I always start really dark. So I'm putting that base coat down and then when I am done, I'm going to move on and highlight first with just plain old uh, Prussian blue. And then my second highlight color on this is going to be taking some of that Prussian blue and now mixing it in a little bit of gray blue, which you can see makes kind of a kind of attractive color. It's not as gray as you would think, but gray blue is actually quite a lot brighter and more blue than you kind of expect from the name. So you can see here, I'm just gonna apply that as a highlight color and um, I'm kind of applying it to the areas where I would expect there to be more light and then sort of feathering that out down and into the really deep colors and kind of leaving it quite dark underneath his cuffs and sort of towards more towards his body on those front flaps and yeah I'm just gonna I'm gonna because again the color is fairly transparent because Vallejo I'm applying a couple of coats I will then finish these areas off by adding even more of the gray blue into my color so it's quite light and this I'm going to be more using as an edge highlight than anything else so really just running along the edges of those flaps and the edges of the cuffs places like that blending it out but being pretty sparing about this this is more kind of to simulate wear and those really high creases than anything else I'm now going to kind of paint his very heroically open undershirt and I'm going to use a buff as a base color and then I'm going to make quickly sort of a medium highlight mixing just white and buff together really really quickly and then uh, finally just finishing off with a, kind of a small amount of white just here and there sort of on the very high areas. This is quite a small area so you should be able to you know do this pretty quickly and without too much trouble. Next, I'm going to be painting his sash, and I decided to go with purple here. That's a nice color. It is kind of between blue and red, so it's ideal. As usual, I'm making my base coat very dark by mixing some royal purple with some black, and I'm going real dark. I'm then going to highlight using just plain old royal purple, and then when that's done, I'm going to be mixing a little bit of buff into my royal purple and using that as a highlight on the tops of folds here. 
Now when I'm done with this, I decided I kind of wanted to make this a little bit more interesting. You don't have to do this, depending on you know what how comfortable you feel with detail work, but I thought it'd be fun to paint a pattern on here. So what I'm gonna do is take some buff and mix a very small amount of the royal purple into it. So it's more kind of yellowy cream than anything. And I'm gonna thin it down a lot so that it flows easily so I can do fine detail work. And I'm gonna be putting a little pattern on here. What I'm doing is painting some diagonal lines here so you can see I'm forming sort of a diamond pattern. And then I'm just gonna fill in in those sort of diamond squares. I'm gonna be kind of making sort of the indication of some little design. It's too small for you to really tell what it is here, but you know, just kind of make some little dots and things kind of indicate there's a pattern there. So I'm gonna be doing that. And then I'm gonna take um, and do a little quick highlighting just by taking a bit of white and just, and just pure white as a matter of fact. I'm gonna be using that to highlight uh, lines and kind of the designs where they're kind of on the tops of creases and folds and that just adds a nice extra emphasis and detail to that pattern. Then my final step to finish off this sash, I'm going to take um, Leviathan Purple, which is a Citadel wash. I think that's an old style name, but you can figure out what they use now. And I'm gonna very carefully sort of pin wash down in the creases and folds to even further emphasize the sash. Our pirate's also wearing a bandana under his hat. You can just kind of see the indication of it. Um, and so I decided I would just do this real quickly using green. I have taken some extra dark green and I'm applying that as a base coat to those areas just real fast. And then I'm going to take some German camouflage bright green. Uh, why I use that, it's kind of arbitrary. It's just what I happen to have laying around because I was painting some Germans. So I'm gonna be using that as a highlight color. It, it, the point here is you don't have to be too fussy. The point is just to find a nice bright green color. It could really be anything. That's just happened to be the bright green color I had around. So that's what I'm using. And you can see I'm just gonna quickly put that on, layer it on, cause it's kind of transparent and just get some, you know, a nice clear bright green look going and when you're done with that you can even add some buff into the bright green if you want to get an even higher highlight for sort of the edges of the fabric. Now of course we have the shoes and the hat here to do and I decided I would make them both leather because I don't know it feels like a leather hat sort of fits with that kind of weird pirate persona so that's why it's going to be the brown leather along with the shoes. I'm using a base coat here of German Camouflage Black Brown. It's one of my favorite colors if you haven't noticed in other tutorials. And it is indeed what I happen to have laying around because I said use kind of what you have because we don't, most of us have every Vallejo color out there. So, you know, this is a good dark brown and it's another f filling my theme with Vallejo of always starting with a really, really dark base color and then applying uh, paints on top of it more transparently. So I'm base coating all these areas. And then I'm going to take, um, some German camouflage medium brown because once again I had all these kind of German camo colors laying around so that's what I'm going to be using. And I'm applying it pretty transparently all over the shoes particularly to kind of highlight but you can see how much of that dark brown is really showing through and I just build up colors on areas where I want there to look like there's more wear. And on his hat you really want to apply those light brown colors sort of at the top edges of the hat and sort of feather downwards into the darker thing. You can kind of apply kind of sloppy, kind of streaky strokes. So it looks like there's some uneven kind of patchy wear going on. Cause that's what you kind of see on older or sort of worn leather that gets patchy and the color is kind of uneven. It's not just a smooth effect. So I apply that along the edges and blend down. And don't forget to do the top of the hat kind of the same way. It's going to be quite light and worn on top and then kind of feather down into the very dark brown at the bottom. And continuing my theme of using uh, German camo colors, I'm gonna make my final highlight on the leather areas using German camouflage light brown. And I'm really applying that to places like the tips of his shoes and really along the very top edge of his hat. And I'm doing it in the same way I did with the last color, just a little bit more subtly. So I'm applying it kind of patchily in sort of a kind of a ziggy zaggy way and kind of blending it downwards and that's just you know it's just a very similar technique that I use whenever I'm painting leather regardless of my paint brand I'm just um, you know I'm, I'm just you know choosing different colors and working with what I have which is in this case all these sort of German camo colors which you know even though they are supposed to be for that purpose they are perfectly well suited to you know painting pirate hats in this case 
I'm now going to do a couple small detail areas really quick here. First I'm going to be painting his pistol, the wood of his pistol stock. I'm using a base coat here of the German Camouflage Black Brown again. And because I want it to look a little bit different from the leather on his hat and shoes, I'm going to be using Vallejo Leather Brown as my first highlight color here. It's quite a small area so it shouldn't be too hard to, um, you know, you know, just do this very quickly. And then I'm going to take a final highlight on those wood areas of um, orange brown from Vallejo. Uh, you want this pretty thin because it's quite, it is quite a bright orange color. And I'm going to apply it very thinly, sort of a highlight on, you can see there, on the butt end of the pistol and sort of an edge highlight along the other areas of the wood. Once I finished with that, I'm also going to quickly paint his eye patch because where would a pirate be without that? It's a really small area, so I'm just going to quickly paint it black and then just do a little tiny bit of highlight, highlighting there using German gray. Uh, no reason to really get carried away with this. You want it to be nice and dark, so you know, don't worry too much about highlighting. Finally, I'm going to be finishing up the metal areas on this guy. I'm just starting out with the gold kind of bronze areas. He's got some detail on his gun and of course the guard on his sword I'm going to be making that color and also don't forget his big buttons because on his um, cuffs and on his uh, front because those are of course very important and obvious on this model. Um, I'm base coating all of these with a mixture of German camouflage black brown and Vallejo Air gold so it's kind of a, kind of a nice brown, browny, dull metallic color. And then I'm just going to highlight them using regular gold. And especially on the gun parts, I'm not going to go much higher than that because I want it to look kind of bronzy. Now on the um, sword guard and on his buttons, I want those to be quite shiny. So I'm going to be taking a bit of silver and mixing that into the gold and using that as a high highlight sort of on the very top of the guard and on the tops of the buttons because I want those to look extra shiny and really extra blingy. The um, gun barrel, flintlock, and blade of the sword are going to be painted with a base coat of German gray and Vallejo Air gun metal to start out with. Um, and then I'm going to highlight those areas pretty generously with just pure uh, gun metal, you know, just because I kind of, you know, I, I want it, I mean, they can be a little bit more shiny. Don't put so much highlight on the gun parts because you want that to be dull, but you can really go to town on the sword. And I'm actually even going to continue highlighting that blade because it needs to be really shiny feeling. I'm going to first um, apply s some Vallejo Air Steel to that. And I'm going to be kind of applying all the paint to the top edge of the blade and feathering down because you expect that to be where the cutting edge is on the sword and it'd get darker towards the base. And I will then take a very fine line of Vallejo Air Silver and use that really on the top edge of the sword because that's where it's kind of like a saber type blade I assume and that's where it's really going to be sharp and I want to really put extra emphasis on that particular part. Okay so here's our finished sort of classic pirate done totally with Vallejo paints for all you people out there who only have them. And you can see the results here are really, really nice. And I think the main takeaway from all this is you can get great results with really any brand of paint, but it's really critical that you know the range, really get acquainted with it, all of its strengths, all of its weaknesses, and you know, see how the different colors work, not just the dark colors, but the light colors, the bright colors, figure out what sort of the characteristics of that particular range are and how the colors are, go on really, you know, at different ends of the spectrum. And then you just need to figure out ways to compensate for that as we've done here, for example, by applying consistently very dark base coats. And then that helps when we apply the, the other lighter colors, which with Vallejo, as I said, are often on the transparent side and often need to be layered on several times to get, you know, enough brightness and enough color. So you need to have a good, you know, base coat for that. And, you know, we couldn't have, for example, just taken the bright red and apply it straight as a base coat in this figure. It would have never worked. It would have been a mess. So you have to, you know, you have to be able to work around this. And I felt like I also had used way more different paints than usual. By the time I was done with this figure, believe me, there were bottles everywhere. Um, so what paint you use is a personal preference. And sometimes you just don't have any choice because it's white. Uh, it's the only thing you can really get or afford or whatever. So you you know you have to you know work with what you've got. 
but you know, and I, I do really like how this figure turned out and I've made other great models using almost entirely Vallejo paints. But you know, in general, my opinion still remains that especially for painting wargaming figures and where you want to do maybe work, be able to work pretty quickly, it is not the ideal range of paints if you have alternatives. I would say go with Citadel, go with Foundry. They're better suited to wargaming figures. This is really more of a paint for doing larger models. It's great for that. But if you don't have any choice, you can still get good results. So I hope you like this video. As usual, please leave me comments, share it, uh, like it, uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so that you can keep up on what I'm doing. Uh, next week we'll probably be going back to a, a sort of more of a mix of Vallejo and other things because this is, yeah, this is, I don't want to do this all the time. So until next time, happy painting.